let us take up the most important uh, topic pet ki papi gastrointestinal motility right so all our effort is to have good food right so how that peristalsis rate of peristalsis repeatedly asked topic in uh, the neat pg exam dnb aims pgi everywhere so those students who have downloaded the u medico please take a annual subscription you can even decide after the exam also no problem so uh, you have all the video libraries uh, aims need pg dnb uh, pgi chipma um, high yield topics uh, topic wise point wise review everything is available so please take a chance to uh, master the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter is increased by what it is increased by the acetylcholine so there are certain substances that increase the lower esophageal sphincteric pressure and those which decrease and make it get loose and you get the reflux esophagitis so examiner's favorite question is what increases the reflux and what makes the esophageal sphincter become tighter you should be very sure so secretin cholecystokinin vip progesterone isoprenorol anticholinergic ketropine theophylline t jo pite na t will decrease the lower esophageal sphincter and lead to increased reflux ethanol sharab fatty meal chocolate all these things will decrease the lower esophageal sphincteric pressure whereas acetylcholine beta choline metacholine all these cholinergic drugs and norepinephrine adrenergic agonists then vasopressin motilin gastrin prostaglandin proteinaceous meal if you eat proteinaceous meal reflux will be lesser if you happen to eat fatty meal reflux will be more that's what you need to basically remember so i leave the list for you <coughs> ejra mugging karne ka topic hai right so you have to somehow uh mastery so mixing waves of the stomach stomach jo hota na wo ek girni hai it is like uh, your mixing so it will nicely mix your food right so where those waves basically originate from it is the fundus of the stomach you know very well this is the fundus this is the body so it is the fundus of the stomach where the mixing waves originate is what you need to remember so there are gentle mixing waves every 20 seconds they mix the bolus with the 2 and 1/2 liters per day of gastric juice to turn it into chyme then more vigorous waves they travel from the fundus the body and uh, uh from the body to the pyloric area by the time you come to pyloric area there are more vigorous type of waves which are called type 2 waves but where do they originate they originate basically in the fundus the slow mixing waves originate in the fundus is what you have to remember so uh if you look at this stomach the first thing is propulsion the peristaltic waves moves from the fundus towards the pylorus then you have grinding the most vigorous peristalsis and mixing occurs very close to the pylorus then happens the retro propulsion aap mixi mein bhi kare to aise hi hota thak water will come up no like a retro propulsion the pyloric end of the stomach pumps small amounts of chyme into the duodenum and simultaneously pump most of the contents backward into the stomach that is the third type called retro propulsion the three different types of waves in the stomach is what you have to ultimately remember so where does the mixing occur predominantly in the stomach it occurs in the antrum and why in the antrum because the muscle in the fundus and the body are very thin and uh, mixing movements are feeble 
and uh, when the foot comes to the antrum towards the pyloric part then they the muscle of the stomach is more and that lead to nice churning which is the mixing movement is what you need to remember then in the stomach what is called as the receptive area of the stomach is a very important push the fundus in the upper part of the body is there na when or the bolus of the food enters the lower esophageal sphincter opens and there is a relaxation which happens uh, um, in the lower esophageal sphincter and the food enters then this fundus accommodates all that food which has entered into the stomach is what you have to remember so you have a cephalic phase where the sight to smell the taste of the laddu will make you to salivate and uh, the vagus nerve during the cephalic phase when the part of the food oh the kind of a salivation that you get the vagus nerve immediately stimulates and makes the stomach muscle uh, to increase its activity and also the glandular activity then after that you have a receptive relaxation where the fundus accommodates the incoming bolus and uh, in some people there is an impaired relaxation expected in the fundus if there is any such impaired accommodation uh, then the bolus which is entering instead of staying for a while in the fundus become pushed towards the antrum unduly that is what you will find so fundamentally the motility disorders of the gut very big topic doctor tomorrow you will do md general medicine dm gastroenterology and after doing dm gastroenterology you may become the world's biggest specialist in uh, constipation and uh, the motility disorders of the gut is a possibility or you may be becoming a, a hepatic transplant operating in japan operating in china next day operating in new delhi then in mumbai dream big dream big doctor you will dream big you will enjoy the evening right now you have a receptive relaxation where you are after that you have a retro propulsion etc etc so in the fasting stage the food enters the stomach there is a receptive relaxation accommodation then after that the peristalsis begin and the antrum undergoes the systole and lead to the development of the retro propulsion is what you have to ultimately remember once more the same story repeatedly asked in the various neat pg and aims exam even recent aims november 2017 slow wave potentials of the gid where are they produced there is a pacemaker for the peristalsis in the gut and they are called interstitial cells of cajol is what you need to remember so the interstitial cells of the cajol are the pacemakers of the gut and uh, there is a big interstitial network and uh, the slow wave is conducted to the smooth muscle and the smooth muscle of the gut has got calcium channels what type of calcium channels l type of calcium channels and uh, they typically are responsible for the motility of the gut is what you need to remember so in summary you can see you have a myentric plexus and then there is a submucosal plexus and this is the circular muscle layer this is the longitudinal muscle layer so this is how the structure of the gut is what you need to remember now the normal resting membrane potential of the gut gut has a pacemaker just like a heart has a pacemaker obviously gut also has got a resting membrane potential how much is that is a favorite question of the examiner minus 50 to minus 60 millivolts is what you need to remember and uh, there are spike potentials that occur automatically whenever this resting membrane potential is coming down to minus 40 millivolts whenever it is becoming whenever it is becoming positive that lead to spike potentials and that makes the calcium sodium channels to get opened up 
and uh, that is how the muscle contraction occurred and the peristalsis is sustained is what you need to remember.